It's 1923 and the German government is bankrupt, having spent all its gold reserves in the First World War. On top of this, the Treaty of Versailles means that the government can't access the revenue from many areas that have previously been important wealth earners for the country, such as the coal fields in Silesia. And, just to make it even worse, the German government has to pay hefty reparations to the Allies. 1923, the French occupation of the Ruhr. To try and sort this massive financial problem out, the German government asks the Allies for a reduction to reparations. However, this is refused as many countries, particularly France, need the money themselves so that they can pay off their wartime debts to the USA. This means that it gets to the point in 1923 when Germany can no longer afford to pay reparations. Germany are obligated under the treaty to send coal to France from the rich coal fields in the Ruhr, a region in northwest Germany situated on the Ruhr River. But in December 1922, they fail to do this. The French are not happy, and so they send troops into the Ruhr, confiscating raw materials, manufactured goods, and industrial machinery. There is not much the government can do as the treaty has limited the German army to 100,000 men, paling in comparison to France's 750,000. They are left with no option but to urge passive resistance, passive resistance being non-violent disobedience. Many German workers go on strike, with some even sabotaging machinery. The French retaliate by arresting those who obstruct them, and, crucially, seeing that the Germans aren't going to cooperate, by bringing in their own workers. The French occupation leaves Germany in even more financial wreckage than it was to begin with. This is because the Ruhr is essential to Germany's economy, containing around 80% of German coal, iron and steel reserves, as well as many factories. As a result, Germany's debts go up, unemployment increases, and the shortage of goods gets worse. Whilst many Germans resent the French for what they've done, many also see it as a failing of the Weimar government to resist the French, although realistically the Weimar government had little choice. In 1924, Gustav Stresemann, the Weimar foreign minister, agrees to the Dawes plan with the Americans. You can find out more about him in the video on Stresemann, which I'll link in the corner. He calls off German passive resistance, and these factors, together, mean that the French agree to leave the Ruhr, with them finally leaving in 1925. 1923, the French occupation of the Ruhr. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and tell all your friends. If you want to help me out on Patreon, extend my student budget a bit, then you can find a link in the description, in the corner, you know the drill. Oh, and if you use Twitter, then I can be found at a long time ago underscore YT. Where's that? Yay, holler.